Sairam students, today we will learn geography, lesson number 3, motions of the earth. In our previous class, we had learnt about rotation, revolution and leap year. Today, we will learn about solstices, that is summer solstice, winter solstice and about equinox. Before we begin with our lesson, let us quickly recap what we had learnt in our previous class. We had learnt about the earth, that is the earth has two types of motions, rotation and revolution. What is rotation? Rotation is the movement of the earth on its axis. And what is revolution? The revolution is the movement of the earth around the sun in a fixed path or orbit and we know that the earth it rotates from west to east do you know children that the earth it revolves around the sun in anti clockwise direction and the axis of the earth which is an imaginary line makes an angle of 66 and a half degrees with its orbital plane. Thus the plane formed by the orbit is called the orbital plane. And the earth's axis makes an angle of 23 and a half degrees with its circle of illumination. That is the line that divides the earth to create equal parts of day and night. It is an imaginary line that passes through the center of the earth from poles and earth takes about 24 hours to complete one rotation which is known as the earth day and it takes about 365 days and 6 hours that is one fourth day to complete one revolution around the sun on its orbital path but we ignore the 6 hours for the sake of convenience and every four years these saved six hours are added to make one day that is six into four that is 24 hours in the month of February. This year with an extra day is known as a leap year and has 366 days. Now let us continue with our lesson. We learned about revolution that is the earth revolves around the sun in an elliptical orbit and throughout its revolution around the orbit the earth is inclined in the same direction and we get different types of seasons. So we know that a year is usually divided into winter season, spring season, summer season and autumn season. But why there is change in seasons? The seasons they change due to the change in the position of the earth around the sun. Here you can see in the image given there. The rays of the sun are at 90 degrees on the equator. And sometimes it will be 90 degrees on the Tropic of Cancer or at 90 degrees on the Tropic of Capricorn depending on the position of the earth. So there is always a change in seasons that is different seasons are caused due to the change in the position of the earth around the sun. Now let us learn about solstices and equinox. So we know that the revolution of the earth causes seasons. That is during the revolution as different parts of the earth are tilted towards the sun. Solstices and equinox are experienced. Now children if we look at this diagram we can see that we have summer solstice on 21st June and winter solstice on 22nd December. We have equinox on 
21 March and on 23 September. Now let us learn more about these in detail. Let us learn about summer solstice. Now children if you look at the diagram on 21st June we can see that the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun. That is the rays of the sun they are falling directly on the tropic of cancer. Hence these areas receive more heat whereas the areas near the poles. Children you can see the north pole and down you can see the south pole. So these poles receive less heat as the rays of the sun are slanting. And we can see that the north pole is inclined towards the sun. And the places beyond the arctic circle. So they experience continuous daylight for about 6 months. Since a large portion of the northern hemisphere is getting light from the sun. So it is summer in the regions north of the equator. Children, why do the poles experience about 6 months day? And six months night. This is due to the earth's tilted axis. Each pole receives continuous sunlight for six months. And thus experiences six months day. And for six months that is June onwards. The north pole is inclined towards the sun. And receives sunlight throughout the day. So it experiences six months day. At the same time, the south pole is away from the sun. So, the south pole has 6 months night. And after 6 months, that is December onwards, the positions are reversed. So, the longest day and the shortest night at these places occur on which date? Yes, it occurs on 21st June. So, the longest day and the shortest night at these places occur on 21st June. Now at this time in the southern hemisphere all these conditions are reversed. And so we have winter season there. And the nights are longer there than the days. So this position of the earth is called the summer solstice. So, what is the effect of summer solstice in northern hemisphere and in southern hemisphere? We saw that northern hemisphere receives more heat. So, it is summer in northern hemisphere. Whereas, southern hemisphere receives less heat. That is, it is winter in southern hemisphere. And the days are longer and nights are shorter in northern hemisphere. Whereas the days are shorter and nights are longer in southern hemisphere. And the north pole experiences continuous daylight for 6 months. Whereas the south pole experiences continuous night for 6 months. Now let us learn about winter solstice. Now children look at the diagram. We can see that on 22nd December, the Tropic of Capricorn receives direct rays of the sun as the south pole tilts towards it. And as the sun's rays fall vertically at the Tropic of Capricorn, a larger portion of the southern hemisphere is getting light. Therefore, which season we'll have over there? It is summer. Yes. So, we have summer in the southern hemisphere with longer days and shorter nights. Whereas, the reverse happens in the northern hemisphere. So, this position of the earth is called the winter solstice. So, what is the effect of winter solstice 
in southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere we saw that the southern hemisphere receives more heat so it is summer in southern hemisphere whereas northern hemisphere receives less heat so it is winter in northern hemisphere and the days are longer and nights are shorter in southern hemisphere whereas the days are shorter and nights are longer in northern hemisphere we saw that the south pole experiences continuous daylight for 6 months whereas the north pole experiences continuous night for 6 months now do you know that christmas is celebrated in australia in the summer season why why is it so why is the southern hemisphere celebrating christmas in summers because on 22nd december the tropic of capricorn receives direct sun rays due to the tilt of the south pole towards it as the sun's rays are vertical on it hence it has summers therefore christmas which falls on 25th december is celebrated in summers in the southern hemisphere now let us learn about equinox if you look at the diagram children we can see that on 21st march and on 23rd september the direct rays of the sun are falling on the equator at this position neither of the poles is tilted towards the sun so the whole earth experiences equal days and equal nights so this is called an equinox so children what is an equinox equinox is the position of the earth when direct rays of the sun fall on the equator at this position neither of the poles is tilted towards the sun so the whole earth experiences equal days and equal nights now let us see the effect of equinox on 23rd september we have autumn season in northern hemisphere and spring season in southern hemisphere and the opposite is the case on 21st march we have spring season in northern hemisphere and autumn season in southern hemisphere thus children we can say that we have days and nights because of the rotation of the earth and changes in the seasons because of the revolution of the earth now let us recap what we have learned in today's lesson today we learned about revolution of the earth and seasons that is the earth is going around the sun in an elliptical orbit and throughout its orbit the earth is inclined in the same direction so there are four seasons in a year summer winter spring and autumn and seasons change due to the change in the position of the earth around the sun and we learnt about summer solstice that is the rays of the sun fall directly on the tropic of cancer hence these areas are hot and the areas near the poles receive less heat as the rays of the sun are slanting so in the northern hemisphere the longest day and the shortest night occur on 21st june and in the southern hemisphere the shortest day and the longest night occur on this day this position of the earth is known as the summer solstice at this time when there is summer in the northern hemisphere the southern hemisphere has winter season and we learnt about winter solstice that is on 22nd december 
the tropic of capricorn receives direct rays of the sun as the south pole is tilted towards it as the sun's rays fall vertically at the tropic of capricorn a larger portion of the southern hemisphere gets light therefore it is summer in the southern hemisphere with longer days and shorter nights and the reverse happens in the northern hemisphere so this position of the earth is called the winter solstice so christmas is celebrated in australia in the summer season and we also learnt about equinox that is on 21st march and september 23rd the direct rays of the sun fall on the equator so at this position neither of the poles is tilted towards the sun so the whole earth is experiencing equal days and equal nights so this is called as an equinox and on 23rd september we have autumn season in the northern hemisphere and spring season in the southern hemisphere and the opposite is the case on 21st march that is when it is spring in the northern hemisphere there is autumn in the southern hemisphere so we can say that the days and nights and changes in the seasons are due to the rotation and revolution of the earth respectively i hope children you have understood this lesson very well so read the chapter thoroughly thank you